The Fed statement is out, and boy, is it a little bit of a shocker. What is crossed out in blue is what is removed from the statement, and what is underlined in blue is what was added to the statement. So notably here in the second paragraph, they took out this. The U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. Tighter financial and credit conditions for households and businesses are likely to weigh on economic activity, hiring, and inflation. The extent of these effects remains uncertain. The committee remains highly attentive to inflation risks. The Fed added, quote, The committee judges that the risks to achieving its employment and inflation goals are moving into better balance. The economic outlook is uncertain, and the committee remains highly attentive to inflation risks. The Fed removed... The committee will continue to assess additional information and its implications for monetary policy in determining the extent of additional policy firming that may be appropriate to return inflation to 2% over time. The committee will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy. The lags in which monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation and economic and financial developments. So that was taken out. The additional policy firming, which can be seen as as bullish. This was added. In considering any adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate, the committee will carefully assess incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. The committee does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. So in the statement itself, not a lot changed, but they did push back at least a little bit on rate cuts coming soon. And they're more so leaning towards rate cuts and taking out additional policy firming. But it's really the press conference that is the important part. And that is where the bombshells were dropped that caused the S&P 500 to trade down about 1.25%. This is the statement that caused stocks to really sell off today. Jerome Powell was asked if the first rate cut is going to be the start of a cycle of rate cuts or if this is going to be potentially a one-off kind of cut rate, see what happens, hold for a while and continue that process. Fed Jerome Powell answered this a couple different ways, but he really did just get straight to the point. He says, we are going to be data dependent. Based on the meeting today, we probably won't be confident enough by March. If it's a one-off or a cycle, we'll depend on the data. So he really did push back on the March rate cut, continued to go back to that data dependency. But if he were to essentially make a prediction today, it would be no rate cut in March. Jerome Powell kept going back to data dependent. They want to be comfortable with where inflation is and where inflation is going. They don't want to start cutting rates and then have to stop because inflation could spike again. And that's the main thing that is causing stocks to trade lower. We now have no idea when we could get the first rate cut, but we're pretty confident that it's not going to be in March. Keep in mind, a lot of stocks even though markets were not officially pricing in a rate cut in March, a lot of stocks were trading off of the expectation we could get a rate cut in March. Even Goldman Sachs believed we would get the first rate cut in March. Now, that's not to say we won't get the first rate cut in March, but you would really have to see some weak inflation reports and potentially some weak labor market reports in which we will get the non-farm payroll report and the unemployment rate coming out Friday. And that's going to be important. But odds are Fed Jerome Powell already knows what those numbers are going to be. He said multiple times that he can get those jobs reports a couple days beforehand most of the time. So odds are if he's saying that, the situation is still looking good for the economy, which is bad for interest rate policy and, well, Fed funds rate reductions. This was also very important. Jerome Powell was asked if slowing the balance sheet runoff could come in the months ahead. And he he did not just off the top this question. He actually pulled out the paper in which it was basically a prepared remark for this balance sheet question. He says, balance sheet runoff so far as done very well as the process has continued, questions are starting to be asked if the pace should be slowed. He says, in March, we will be ta talking in depth about lowering the balance sheet runoff, which that can be very good news for lowering bond yields. We've talked about this a couple times here on the channel. I expected Powell to hint towards 
that March meeting being the meeting in which you could see a reduction of the pace of the balance sheet runoff. Now, the, the Fed is currently running off about $60 billion of treasuries every month of their uh, portfolio. Right, so they're running off about sixty billion. That's what their balance sheet is being reduced every month, and then thirty billion of mortgage-backed securities. Now, when you look at TLT, TLT is actually doing quite okay today, uh, up zero point seven one percent. Not quite the day I thought we could get, but if you look at TLT on a daily chart, let's pull this out to a weekly chart. The balance sheet runoff has had a lot of restrictive um, selling pressure on TLT. So if that were to stop or slow down, that could mean TLT could rise a lot more. And that would mean like 10 year treasury, 20, 30 year treasury yields would likely fall. And that would be good news for stocks. Jerome Powell also says there is a potential scenario where the Fed could hold rates where they are more or less just move them around a little bit and use the balance sheet as one of the main principles of kind of loosening monetary policy but he thinks that's unlikely he was also asked if the if the reverse repo market needs to go to zero or essentially what the fed is waiting for and as you can see here just over the last two years or so the reverse repo market has went from 2.3 trillion dollars in april of 2023 so not even a year ago down to 615 billion dollars today the banking system is running out of excess capital, and uh, yeah, this is going to eventually force the Fed to stop their balance sheet reductions. But Jerome Powell said that doesn't necessarily need to run down to zero before they stop reducing their balance sheet. Jerome Powell was asked if inflation stays where it is today over the next coming months, would that warrant the Fed while starting to trim their Fed funds rate? And Jerome Powell just basically answered yes that would cause them to adjust policy because if you look at three or six month trajectories of inflation they are at two percent or even slightly under two percent so this was another interesting question uh he was asked i believe by wall street journal it says many on wall street believe if inflation continues down this path it could be running under two percent so instead of having an inflation problem maybe a deflation problem or uh not enough inflation he says we are not looking for inflation to tap the two percent base and 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 just kind of bounce there we are looking for inflation to base out around two percent we're not looking at inflation anchoring at two percent if it comes to that we will have to deal with it if inflation starts to run under two percent or into deflation essentially powell's saying you'll get more rate cuts if you do start to see inflation data come in really weak jerome powell said in fact that i that the biggest risk is that inflation just comes down to like two and a half percent or the high twos and doesn't quite get down to two percent Jerome Powell thinks the labor market is at or near normal. Jerome Powell says a slide in employment could cause the Fed to start cutting rates. Quote, if we saw a weakening in the labor market, that would cause us to cut sooner. Jerome Powell was asked, why keep policy rates high if you think inflation is easing? He said, we feel like inflation is coming down. Growth is strong and the labor market is strong. We plan on dialing back this year, but we do need confirmation. Inflation is indeed coming down to 2%. Now, this may be the biggest bombshell of all, just maybe. Jerome Powell says, we thought we would need to see weakening in the labor and economic activity. We don't believe we need to see that anymore. We would like to see the economy and labor market doing well and inflation coming down. And I said, holy, because uh, that's a big one. It, it seems like a lot of people get fearful when you get you know, good labor reports or good economic data, because that means the Fed's not going to cut as much. And I think the Fed made it very, very clear, understandably clear today, which is which is a real feat for the Fed that it's all about inflation. It does not matter if you're running at 5% GDP or 1% GDP. As long as inflation falls, then you will get rate cuts. If it doesn't, you won't. If inflation stagnates, then we could keep policy rates in quote restrictive for a long time. But I think this is great news for the folks that are in the soft landing camp because it really shows that you want to see the economy doing well. If it starts to do poorly, the Fed's going to cut rates more. Hopefully that will offset things a bit if that scenario does start to play out. But you don't need to see 
things getting bad to get rate cuts. And again, if things do start to get bad, if Friday's jobs report is bad for whatever reason, if Powell does not already know those numbers, well, that could mean maybe the March rate cut is back on the table. Stocks are obviously not liking this today. Stocks are trading down about one and a half percent. But in all reality, I mean, markets have rallied quite a bit recently. I don't think this is groundbreaking new information, at least on the part of no rate cut in March. Most investors are expecting the first rate cut now in May or June, but I do think it is that knee-jerk reaction, the realization that we need to get more data on inflation, that it's going to take longer for the Fed to cut rates, and maybe instead of pricing in five, six, seven rate cuts in 2024, we may only get three rate cuts that the Fed signaled on their last Fed meeting via the summary of economic projections. Overall, stocks have been rallying basically every single day, hitting new all-time highs. This was bound to happen either way to see a bit of a correction here, but it looks like Jerome Powell's comments around March, probably not seeing the first rate cut, are enough to tip things over the edge, all things considering Google was down big time today. Google is down 7.4% right now. Microsoft down 2.5%. Apple reports earnings on Thursday. Apple's down 1.6% after falling about 2% yesterday. Even AMD, the strongest of the bunch, with arguably the, the worst earnings out of all of them and by far the worst guidance. AMD only down two and a half percent. Still, there's a lot of red across the board, especially with your Magnificent Seven or your just big tech names. Tesla stock, one of the better performers today. Tesla stock is down 1.7 percent. At one point today, Tesla stock was positive when Fed Jerome Powell just started speaking. As you can see here, Tesla stock was doing pretty dang well ever since the open of trading today uh or really ever since the bottom in after hours you've seen yesterday at 182 dollars 53 cents tesla stock started to rally big time hitting a high of 193 dollars 96 cents today it seems like the whole elon situation is really just i mean over with at this point as far as the board and 25 percent voting power and his compensation package it looks like there's going to be a remedy for that and uh Tesla stock investors, well, really shrugged it off today a lot more than I think most people realize. I think Tesla stock is coming back with a vengeance as long as stocks do not fall with a vengeance. Following Jerome Powell, yields are rising at least a little bit from where they were. At one point, you were down about 10 basis points on the 10-year treasury. Now you're only down about six basis points to 3.994%. I don't think treasuries are going to rally all too much from here. If anything, what we got today was bullish for treasuries, especially the indication that balance sheet runoff could start well, end in May or at least slow down quite a bit, but it's, it, I, I don't think it's enough to cause a huge move either direction for the treasuries at this point. Let's get into all of your Tesla stock specific news today, starting with a post from Elon Musk. He says, never incorporate your company in the state of Delaware. Elon also says that he recommends incorporating in Nevada or Texas if you prefer shareholders to decide matters. These tweets come in response to Judge McCormick's ruling that Elon's 2008 compensation package was excessive and there needs to be ramifications. And we don't know ultimately what those ramifications will mean if Elon will have to sell stock, give back some of his stock options. We don't know precisely, but it seems like Tesla stock investors today largely shrugged this off. This did cause a big reaction last night in after hours. Tesla stock at one point was down over 4%, but that's not having an impact on Tesla stock today. Tesla stock was actually the best Magnificent 7 performer before Fed Jerome Powell. So Tesla continues to show some incredible strength in this bounce. Gary Black is providing us some light on this situation. He says, quote, everyone needs to relax about Judge McCormick's decision. There are many ways for the Tesla board to fix this, starting with a reapproving Elon's 2008 comp plan adding clear disclosures about Elon's control exercised in this situation, and then asking shareholders to again approve it, which they would overwhelmingly. Going forward, Elon can't be involved in formulating his own comp plan. This can all be resolved in the coming proxy statement. 
So really, long story short, this is not a big deal for Tesla stock. Tesla Europe and Middle East X account says we invited Tesla owners and select media to Goldsflit in Norway to drive Model Y performance and Model S Plaid 900 meters above sea level on a frozen lake with temps that reached as low as negative 15 degrees Celsius. Jim Farley, Ford CEO, says when we announced Ford EVs would get access to the Tesla superchargers, I said we'd send customers a fast charging adapter. I'm pleased to confirm that eligible Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning owners in the US and Canada can reserve a complimentary adapter starting soon. The Polestar 4 EV has officially gone on sale in Europe and Australia with a starting price of about 60,000 euros. BYD said this in regards to Tesla, quote, Tesla is our very respected industry peer. It is also our client, Lee said, adding, I think this market is very large. It's not that we must surpass them or they must surpass us. Instead, BYD and Tesla together or more new energy vehicle brands together, we need to think about how to increase the new energy vehicle cake. As Paul Jamal says on X, Love the name, by the way. BYD is helping Tesla bankrupt the competition. It's better for Tesla's long term. Alex on X says Tesla should hold the shareholder vote. Is Kathleen McCormick's decision BS? And we, the Tesla shareholders, approve Elon's comp package. 91.2% of voters, which is about 16,000 votes currently, approve Elon's comp package. Only 8.8% say no, that Elon should have not gotten this package to begin with elon musk actually responded and commented to this post and said interesting elon posted this video he says going for a walk with optimus and here you can see the post from elon elon musk created a poll on x says should tesla change its state of incorporation to texas home of its physical headquarters 87.4 percent of investors presumably investors said yes 12.6 percent said no tesla just sent out this new email that says experience parculate free cabin air it says bioweapon defense mode removes 99.97% of harmful pollutants, pathogens, and allergens from the air around you by utilizing our medical grade HEPA filtration system. The result is cleaner, safer air circulated throughout your cabin, helping protect you and your passengers from the outside environment. Jeep has unveiled their first images of their first all electric Wagoneer S. Deliveries will begin in fall of 2024. Option activity in Tesla stock today, remarkably pretty positive, given, I mean, you've rallied quite a bit from the open. You do have a positive order value of 57%. 398 orders totaling 95.96 million dollars people are indeed buying the dip in tesla stock today shorts are also starting to take a heavy beating you do have a short interest percentage of free float about 2.92 percent and 15.51 billion dollars currently in short positions short sellers are down about a billion dollars just in the bounce that we have seen over the past couple of days tesla's global inventory numbers for the model y continue to come down a little bit model s x and model 3 inventory staying pretty dang low probably a good sign of some solid demand tesla continues to run about 400 different ads globally via google google trends data indicate an uptick in search trend activity for the cybertruck and the model 3 a slight downtick for the model y and for the model x as far as the economic data today we did get the adp employment change at 8 15 in the morning this morning for the month of January, you came in lower than expectations by quite a margin here. You were expecting 145,000 net job ads in January. You only came in at 107,000 job ads. So what this means or what the ADP really is, we all know what the non-farm payroll report is. That's via the government. The ADP is privately done. So some people think this is a better indicator of what economic activity, what the labor market is currently doing and you did miss 
well, quite a bit here. This report typically comes out a couple of days before we get the non-farm payroll report, and we're going to get that report coming Friday. It looks like estimates actually went a little bit higher for job gains via the non-farm payroll report following this ADP employment change, which is kind of crazy. Now for the data on Friday, we're expecting 180,000 job ads with an unemployment rate around 3.8%. The percent of stocks above their 50 day moving average is down about three and a half percent to 62.58. The dollar is down about a tenth of 1%. Gold is up a half of 1% and TLT is up about 1% today as well. That is all for this video. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Tesla stock closing out the day down 2.24%, down 0.20% in after hours the S&P 500 itself got smoked down 1.63% some of your big earnings um, that you have seen like Microsoft down two and a half percent down about a quarter of one percent in after hours Google closing the day down 7.33% and AMD down about two and a half percent so let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time check out the link down below in the description of this video you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.